You know you're talking about a legendary golfer when you cannot forget how good they were even after six years have gone by since they left this mortal world. But leaving such a legacy isn't a regular phenomenon. It takes a whole lot of time and effort to perfectly carve your skill and transform it into something that can make you irreplaceable. And Arnold Palmer perfectly fits the description. Hey guys, welcome back to another brand new video on the channel. In this video, we're going to delve into the details of the life and accomplishments of Arnold Palmer, one of the greatest and most charismatic golfers that the world has ever seen. There is so much to cover, so without any further ado, let's get on with it. Known for his amazing drives at the golf course, Arnold Palmer was a man of unmatched charisma. Though golf was the main reason that earned him his reputation, Arnold Palmer is so many things to so many different people. Some recognize him as a successful business magnate. To others, he is a talented aviator. It's like Arnold has so many talents and hobbies that the list of his interests and what he did throughout his life never ends. Listening to this, some might think that he must have come from a very rich family and that's why he was able to afford such a lifestyle. Well, let me tell you, not all successful people come from big families. Some have a very humble past. And the story of Arnold Palmer is not very different. Born in 1929 in Pennsylvania at the house of Doris and Milfred Jerome, he spent much of his early childhood living in a working-class steel mill town. His father was a professional greenskeeper at one of the town's golf courses. Needless to say, Arnold had a very strong background. His parents were making just enough money to offer their children an average living. His father occasionally took Arnold onto the course where he used to take some shots. As he grew older, his interest in sports increased and so he kept working on his skills until he got himself admission to Wake Forest College on golf scholarship. It was an accomplishment for him to get that scholarship. But if he hadn't, he probably wouldn't have attended college because his family was not in a situation to afford his education. He worked alongside his studies though. He left college after three years and went to work in the Coast Guard. He left because one of his friends died, but after a year of serving, he came back and resumed college. It was in 1954 when Arnold won his very first title at the Detroit Amateur Championship. And at that very point, he decided to make this sport that he always loved so much and was also good at it, his full-time career. According to Palmer himself, his win at Detroit Championship gave him the confidence that he was good enough to compete at pro levels. So, in 1955, he announced to become a pro golfer. This was exactly after he played the Shawnee O'Delware Pennsylvania Tournament, and that was where his luck rewarded him. Palmer met his wife at this same tournament, and when he met her for the first time, he knew that she was the one. And to be honest, Arnold loved his wife, as you can tell by the fact that they lived together until 1999 before his wife Winifred died. So that was pretty much about his background and how the journey of golfing as a rookie started. There are very few people who are really able to recognize their strengths and the acumen they possess for something. Fortunately, Palmer recognized that early on and today, looking at all his lifelong accomplishments, one can say that golf was made for him. There is a reason he was given the nickname, The King. When Palmer joined golf as a player, the game was in its booming phase, especially during the mid-1900s. That's when Palmer was at the peak of his career, so basically both were growing and flourishing side by side. So, all this established a beautiful synergy between Arnold's career and golf itself. Mentioning this was important, as Arnold is quite known for not only just playing the sport, but he was among the few who put in the effort to develop the golfing community. I mean, as I said, true greatness is required to build a brand around your name. It's time that we finally talk about the wins that make him a golfing legend. So, Palmer earned himself seven major championships during his whole golfing career. He won Masters Tournament four times, once every two years starting from 1958 to 1964. In 2004, he played his Masters Tournament for the 50th time, which was the last one. Alongside winning the Majors, he won the US Open in 1960 and two British Opens consecutively in 1961 and 1962. From this, you'll get an idea about the major wins, but you'll be seeing a pattern here. You see, all the titles he earned were from 1958 to 1964. This pattern proves that Palmer and golf flourished together. You might be wondering, where is the PGA Tournament? Did he win none of the PGAs? 
So, it's true that he earned seven great titles for winning the league as a number one. But in PGA, he stood second three times with 29 wins at several PGA Tour events. Of course, winning a PGA Tour is great, but what I'm going to tell you is a greater accomplishment when you compare it to the wins. It's the fact that Arnold Palmer was among the pioneers who made PGA tournaments popular and famous. It's not just the PGA, Palmer was a regular member of the Masters Club and there he served as an honorary starter for the Masters. He retired in 2006, but he knew that one day he will have to retire from the game. So, he also took the same path that a lot of famous golfers take today. Have you been able to guess it? Yes, it's the golfing business. Golfing industry is a really big one, and the business associated with this industry are equally big. Though Arnold had already made huge bucks by playing golf in several tournaments, he opened his golf business. In this business, he used to make new courses, manage the already built ones, and also took over the jobs of designing luxury courses. Palmer himself designed over 300 golf courses in 25 plus countries. This is simply brilliant. How many businesses do you see around yourself that are established from scratch and within a few years the business becomes an undeniable reality? By now everything that I talked about was pretty much in line with what you can expect from a legendary golfer. A man who spent all his youth and much of his adult playing golf, getting into the golf business is a regular thing. But you see, there's a reason Palmer is known for the versatile acumen that he had for the business. So, in the early 1970s, Palmer developed an interest in the automotive business. And fulfilling that interest, he purchased a dealership of Cadillac. Well, that was just the starting point, as after that, Palmer kept buying more and more dealerships in other cities and expanded his network. This car dealership thing went great and so Palmer opened one in his hometown Latrobe. He named this dealership Arnold Palmer Motors. It was permanently shut down in 2017 after the death of Palmer in 2016. This means that the dealership was operational for over 37 years. Palmer never stopped surprising everyone with his strange interests, and you already saw an example where he opened a car dealership while having a full-time career as a golfer. That's a rare event, however, the next thing I'm gonna tell you is something that Palmer started just because he was interested in doing it and it later turned into a career alongside being a professional golfer. Can you guess what interest this is? Let me give you some hints. It's way crazier, more interesting, and certainly very expensive. So if you haven't guessed it yet, don't strain your mind as this interest of Palmer was flying. It says on his website that next to marrying his wife, Winnie, and deciding on a professional career in golf, there's only one decision Arnold Palmer considers smarter. Learning how to fly an airplane. During 55 years of his flying career, he did over 20,000 miles in several aircrafts. And to honor his service, Westmoreland County Airport's name was changed to Arnold Palmer Airport. And even a statue of Palmer is placed around the entrance of the airport, in which Arnold can be seen holding a golf stick. Now that's what we call an accomplishment. From everything that I've discussed until now, it might seem like this man was all about himself. In reality, it's the opposite. Where Palmer was a great golfer and a business executive, he was more of a philanthropist and a humanitarian. And as with everything else on his portfolio, his charitable activities are nothing short of commendable. Arnold established a foundation of his own called the Arnold Palmer Foundation that worked on making positive changes in the lives of children. From providing charity to support children's education to funding the health expenses of children facing unfortunate medical conditions. This was one of the reasons that this man Palmer was nicknamed the King. I can go all day long listing his accomplishments and titles, but you can get an idea of how good this man was. It takes not just the skills at one's profession, but a strong and charismatic character that earns you respect. And Arnold Palmer was without a doubt one of the most respected and celebrated members of the golfing fraternity. This gem of a person died in 2016 due to a medical condition. He might have left this mortal world, but the work he did when he was here will never let his name fade away. On that note, I'll end this video here. I hope you guys liked it, and if you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.